Hello YouTube, this is Matt from Blaze Gaming, and today we're at the desk instead of at the mod shop over next door. So I just want to cover some tips and tricks that I have for you guys for overclocking with Sky Lake. I'll be specifically using the 6700K, but I believe that these tips and tricks can also apply to KB Lake overclocking as well, since it is just another iteration of Sky Lake. So these tips just help me achieve higher and more stable overclocks. I spent a lot of time playing around in the BIOS for Sky Lake, so I feel like I have a pretty decent grasp on what you can adjust to really help your overclocks out. And I hope that I can share that information with you guys today and hopefully it will benefit you guys as well. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we're in the BIOS here and right away we're just gonna go over to wherever your tweaker is. This is the Asus UEFI BIOS, so every BIOS is a little bit different, but if you're on an Asus board, it should look pretty similar to this. So first off, I just wanna cover base clock overclocking and what you should do with your base clock. So I found that using a combination of a slightly lower core multiplier as well as a slightly higher than stock base clock helped me achieve higher clock speeds. This 109 base clock plus 45, well technically multiplied by 45 multiplier, gives me 4900 megahertz, or just over. And I could not get my system to be stable with just a multiplier of 49. So I don't know if that's specific to my chip or not, but I would definitely recommend playing around with your base clock and seeing if you can, you know, push your overclock a little bit further with it. And if you do end up using some base clock, you're gonna notice that if you also use XMP profiling or overclock tuner for Asus, I, which I do recommend using XMP, it seems to work fine for me, um, is that your DDR4 memory frequency is also going to go up. So, that is actually fine, and I could probably do a little bit higher than 2761. My memory is stock of 2666, but I just increased it by about 100 megahertz with, with that uh, base clock overclock frequency, which doesn't really make any difference at all, but you can leave it at the stock speed, you can underclock it, overclock it, play around with it a little bit, just know that your base clock also will change your RAM frequency. So just keep an eye on it. As for voltage control, I would recommend using manual mode. And I will explain why a little bit further on here. It's kind of combined with, with another tip I use, but I just recommend using manual. A lot of people say adaptive is good to use after you figure out your overclock. But if you ever use adaptive mode, you do not want to like use anything like Prime 95 or any kind of stress test because with adaptive mode, things can get out of hand quite quickly sometimes. It just depends on how your motherboard uses adaptive mode. But sometimes they have been known to compensate a little bit too much for the load and can end up putting a lot more voltage through the CPU than you intended to. So I just, I don't know, I don't like playing with adaptive mode, I never have, and I don't think I ever will, because manual mode seems to work quite well. As for Sky Lake, I think everyone knows it's a pretty good rule of thumb not to really push past 1.4 too much. Um, I was able to get my system to boot on at 5 GHz uh, with 1.395 volts going to the CPU. But it was getting a little sketchy because uh, this will kind of be a good segue, but with load line calibration, which is in, at least for Asus, it's in external digi power control. So I don't know where it is for every other brand, but just find something that has to do with CPU load line calibration. Look at the settings and if you have to Google what they mean so you can you know have a full understanding of what's going on here and what you are changing in your BIOS. But the higher the level, essentially for Asus at least, and I know for Gigabyte, like Extreme is their highest level, which would be like Asus is level 8 here. But this helps compensate the voltage as well while the CPU is under load. And the higher the load, the more it will compensate. It's essentially compensating for what is called V droop, which will actually make your CPU overclock very unstable at times if the V droop is significant. So 
Low line calibration is sort of like adaptive mode in a sense that it will compensate voltage when there's a higher load. So with level seven, um, as you noticed, I had 1.34 manually input in the BIOS. With 1.34 on load line calibration level seven, I hit about 1.392 volts, I believe, under full load, like under a stress test load. So, you know, it's commenting about 0 0.05 volts there at level seven. Um, like I said, each board is different, so the amount of compensation for each level is gonna be different for every board. So just try to pay attention with some monitoring software, you know, like if you have ASUS, you can use AI Suite, or, you know, hardware monitor works well too. So just keep an eye on your voltage and keep playing around with your load line calibration. I have seemed to really like about the second highest level. Um, if I can, I'll try to use six, but seven really seems to get me the most stable overclocks. Eight just kind of scares me sometimes because it really does push the CPU voltage pretty far. Um, it doesn't hold back much. So just play around with it and see what helps you the most. I mean, that's how I found all of these different settings to play with. And what really helped me the most is I just kept trying different combinations of them all. But that's it for BIOS. So when you're done messing around with that, you just go to exit, save changes and reset and boot into Windows. And first off, we're just gonna go down to the start menu and in the search box, you should just type in power options. Uh, this is Windows 7, I believe. If you type in power options in Windows 10, it'll give you the same stuff. But, um, and I'm sure a lot of you have already played with this, but I just recommend using balance. Balance will let you use the C states that your processor has built in, but high performance doesn't. With high performance, you're gonna have the maximum frequency and maximum voltage that you input it at all times but that isn't completely necessary because with balance mode like i said it'll automatically ramp up the voltage and the frequency whenever you present the cpu with a load so you don't have to worry about instability i haven't had any issues with running balanced and i've stress test my cpu relentlessly at 4.9 gigahertz so i really would recommend using balance just to you know, it'll overall, over the entire life of the processor, if you do end up owning it for a long time, I'm sure it can have a pretty good impact on its overall lifespan. Okay, so that wraps it up for my quick tips for overclocking Sky Lake. Uh, I hope you guys weren't expecting too crazy of a video today. If you wanted to see something crazy, you can check out my delitting video right here if you haven't done that already. Uh, I hope these tips that I brought you today just help you achieve either higher overclocks or at least more stable overclocks. Because at the end of the day, my channel is just about sharing information that can hopefully help you guys with your PC, um, you know, building and modding. Exp but other than that, I'll also be trying to get out a video on a PSU shroud for my build here. Uh, which, yes, it already does have a PSU shroud, but I plan on making a different one that, that is just a little more special. I'm gonna add in an LCD screen right down here, and that will be used to monitor stats of the PC and whatnot, and I'll be showing you guys all how to do that in that video. So be looking forward for that and stay tuned. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'm gonna leave the rest up to you.